there. We're your Such a Nightmare co-hosts, Catherine Troyer and Anthony Tresca, and we are so delighted that you are joining us for an eerie extra, which is essentially the place where we do all the things we can't fit in anywhere else. Indeed, and today we are going to be discussing 2021's latest horror theatrical release, Spiral. Excellent. So today is May 21st, 2021, which means that the film just came out and we just saw it. Um, mm-hmm. And this was this was wild, right? Because this is the first time that either of us had been back in theaters since COVID, before COVID times. Yeah, this is my first time back in the multiplexes uh, in 14 months, which is an insane amount of time because previously to COVID, I mean, I was in the movie theaters just about just about every week. Yeah, you and I had just gotten the passes so that we were just like, let's go whenever mm-hmm. we want. And then all of a sudden it was like, well, I guess we're never going again. <laughs> yeah, for a long time I was like, well, maybe the cinema is just dead forever and I'll never go back again. I know. But here I am. I went back and I saw Spiral. <laughs> That's right. And so we both went uh, and we got to have that also surreal experience of having really small um other amounts of people so i had four other people two people that were with me and Mm -hmm. two strangers but you you lived the dream yeah i had my own private screening of spiral it was the nicest theater going experience i've ever had in my entire life the theaters were so clean no one was talking or texting it was very beautiful it was just me and the film (laughs) yeah i i can truly understand now why if i was if i was elite wealthy or even Mm -hmm. mildly wealthy i would have my own theater right like because it just oh it's so beautiful and you're right the floors weren't sticky or any stickier than they always like perpetually are it was so quiet it was just lovely even even in the 14 months that movie theaters have been closed they have not found time to fix the sticky floors because i can report at the theater i went to it was sticky as well it was still that like (laughs) And you're like, how is this possible? But it was. Mm-hmm. And, and it was magical. Because it was like, ah, yes. I'd forgotten that was a sound that I, you know, used to associate, like, on a weekly basis. Yeah, it was. You forgot that the floor could make that sound. I did. I <laughs> did. And, you know, I know a lot of people, people seem to have two approaches to their first post-pandemic film. They're either mm-hmm. waiting for the film that will feel worth going to. Or exactly. they were like, I don't care what it is. I'm just going to go see it. Um, and... Spiral fell somewhere in the middle for me because I actually have a very distinct memory of uh, seeing the first Saw film in theater. So the first Saw film came out in 2004 um, and I was studying abroad that year in Germany. So I must have seen it in 2005 when it came over to Mm -hmm. Germany and Mm -hmm. it was in German which actually worked out well, not because my German was that good, but because for those of you that remember the first Saw film, there's not a lot of talking, right? Um, Because it's just one guy trying to get out of this room. And so most Mm -hmm. of the film, it was just like him shouting out like, nine, which is easy enough to translate as no. Um, Until Jigsaw's final like, but let me tell you why I did this. (laughs) And then I had no clue what was happening. And I had to wait until the film was over because he talks for like seven or eight minutes. And it was a Mm -hmm. super long monologue. And then I Afterwards, I was like, so why did this just happen? Um, and, and that just, like, delights me, right? That that was my experience. So I was kind of excited to see Spiral in theater yeah. just to kind of have that, like, bookend feel to it, right? I, you know, I also was kind of excited to see Spiral. I I have a decent enough experience with the Saw franchise. I, I, like, I like the first movie. I think it's pretty good for what it is. And I've seen bits and pieces from just about, from, like, the other seven saw films and eh, they're okay they're fine or whatever i i was excited to see it i was like maybe chris rock has something interesting to do yeah uh, to say or do with this franchise because i i like chris rock generally and i was yeah like, i like yeah, chris rock i like samuel L. jackson mm-hmm. um i like uh minghella right uh, and i was excited to right. see what he could do because the whole time i was just like you know blessed be because i associate him with handmaid's tale see i was thinking more social network the whole time i was like both of which just... are mild horror films right uh both social network and handmaid's tale uh so i was really excited to see where it would go now people who are watching this video um you may have picked up on the fact that that at least for me certainly but i'm hearing it in anthony's there's a a lot of past tense happening here right Mm -hmm. like i was Was really excited excited. (laughs) um i had so much anticipation for this film um so anthony this is the first time i've gotten a chance to like officially ask you since you've seen it thoughts you know i think spiral was a much better idea than it was an actual film 
uh, in execution, I think Spiral really failed to bring anything entertaining or really interesting to the franchise outside of the initial premise that it's like this horror uh, this horror villain now has like a vengeance against cops yes. and it's we're gonna we're gonna do a, a, a political film about cops and and it's gonna be in the horror franchise what a, so I was like that's interesting that could yeah. be done pretty well uh, this movie doesn't really do it very well but no so you know that my my new stance is and I often don't take stances or I don't think that I take stances very often but I, I have I have one and that is that the worst thing we can have from horror are mediocre horror films. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's what Spiral was. It was fine, right? Even the people behind us when they left, they were like, did you like it? And they were like, yeah, it was okay. Or it was good. But you could tell they like, it was just, it was fine, right? It was a fine film. We have some decent acting. We have some good cinematography. Um, Minghella's uh, speech at the end, his villain speech was delightful. Um, any and he film, does a good job throughout the whole film, He does a very good too. job. Um, he was probably my favorite part of the film, to be to be honest. I thought he did a good job. But Chris Rock um, also does a good job. Samuel L. Jackson does a good job. The supporting cast is fine. But the truth is, is that it was just fine. And, and that that makes me so sad. So let's talk about, let's just start at the beginning and work our way through the film. I mean, it starts off with a, a kind, I guess a more related cold opening than a lot of horror yes. films often have. Because at least the cold opening with uh, that, that police officer uh, is directly linked to the rest of the plot of the film. Although it is just kind of a generic -y, saw inspired cold open. Yeah. You know, I was okay with it because what I was hoping um, and what I thought was going to happen in, from those first few minutes was that this was going to be a really uh, funny film, right? Because I, yeah. his whole joke about, like, the Forrest Gump and how come there's not a second one, like, that was clever. And and to be perfectly honest, and I, I've thought about this quite a bit since I saw the film, you know, by the time you get to the ninth installment in a franchise, I feel like you have to go meta, Right, like I feel like you have to acknowledge that this is a film about horror in the same way that no zombie film today can start with the premise of like, but what are these things? I don't know. What should we call them? Let's call them zombies, right? Like yeah. all zombie horror films now really have to operate in a post Walking Dead, post Night of the Living Dead world where people are like, those are zombies. Yeah, and you know, it, they kind of are operating in a at least a post jigsaw world yes. because it is interesting enough that this film does kind of like weave in the rest of the events from the previous films in there yes. and so i guess in a way it kind of is attempting to do that because it's not trying to be like who's this new person right what is this new strategy they're employing where they torture people and make them play games exactly what no they're yeah all the that. characters were like oh this is just like Jigsaw. And exactly. first off, that was a smart, smart move. But I felt like between Yeah, because the, the audience is just... I mean, that's what yeah. the audience was going to be yes. saying the entire time, but yes. we didn't acknowledge it. No one was going to watch Spiral and be like, I have no idea what this thing called Saw is, right? You're only really probably seeing Saw um, or Spiral if you are either familiar and appreciate the Saw franchise or you're 10 years old and you are sneaking into the theater and didn't and too young, right? To even know what Saw is. Like, those are the only two demographics going to see this film. But I thought that because it was so self-referential of the series and because it was already doing this, like, meta thing with Forrest Gump, um, that it was just going to lean into itself a little bit more. I wanted there to be more referential humor. I wanted there to be just kind of, I wanted the jokes to land a little better, period. Yeah. Um, and I think if that had happened, if the film had said, yes, yes, we know what you're thinking, how could we possibly have a story number nine? But instead it took itself so very seriously. Yes. And seriously as both a film within the Saw franchise and also seriously as like a cop thriller. Yes, kind it of felt movie. very Seven esque, right? It felt like the movie Seven um, or Silence of the Lambs, right? Which are very straight crime. In fact, if you look up them up because they both came before it was okay to be horror, they're not mm -hmm. listed as horror films, they're listed as crime thrillers. And that's how much of, of Spiral reads. Uh, even with yeah. the heat wave and the like, what do you want us to do, Captain? Like, just all of it was very familiar. I mean, there were so many tropes. Like, I mean, in at, like when the one police officer was screaming at uh, Chris Rock, "You're off the rails, man! You're go you're in too deep." Yeah. I'm like, oh my god, did they yeah. just like pick 
a, a line from a grab bag of overused cop cliches. Yeah. Yeah, and and then we have the like, you, you know, you're too much of a loose cannon, so we're gonna part mm-hmm. you up with someone who's brand new. Which first yeah. off, like, wouldn't that actually be the worst way to to mentor someone is to give Listen, them? I mean, cops are not always the best at thinking through plans. As but it's not just cops, seen. right? It's also like <laughs> Hollywood cops, right? Because it's exactly. always that sort of demographic where it's like, okay, you're the wild loose cannon, so we're going to pair you with the impressionable young person, and then we're going to be surprised time and again when it turns out to be like Point Break, which I realized was a little different, but like, or Lethal Weapon, right? Like, w- mm-hmm. And so I think for me, where we began to immediately get into the it's fine, is that it, it was fine. You know, as a cop crime thriller, it was fine, but it there was nothing I hadn't seen, like you said, from that grab bag of like, oh, heat wave. Yep, let's do that. You know, and it just mm-hmm. that that was unnecessary to me. Because why make another film if it's just gonna be just like all the other films? And I think the thing that it thought it was doing differently was like it was like, we are going to play into all of the like cliches of the stuff of the cop uh, genre but we're also going to include a critique of policing and a systemic uh, advocate for systemic reforms kind of but it doesn't really ultimately even commit to that angle very much it's kind of just an i mean it it is an excuse to have kills and also another frustrating thing about a a film in which the whole you know the whole thing is about the kills is that all of the kills in this movie were kind of just boring they were really they unimaginative were, they were boring they were pretty unimaginative and part of the premise of of saw especially the first one and and eventually in the franchise they actually like have a conversation about how they've strayed from the spirit of jigsaw right but like part of the premise was you should actually be able to make a decision right i can either do x or y but in this film you were gonna die regardless of which decision you made because if you lose your tongue you will bleed out four fingers is a life-threatening injury ten you're gone Right, hot wax, I mean, if you sever your own spine versus, right, like, so, and I realized that part of that was the vigilante element, but as a right. Saw film, you were expecting to see, okay, which decision would I make, right, if I was in that situation, right, that's part of the fun is the, like, who, which one would I do, okay, how would I get out of this, and there was none of that, because it was, you're gonna, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't, you're gonna die either way, and that, that made it just weak, Right, that somehow made it a weaker um, series of kills than if they had spent a little bit more time thinking through what is supposed to be one of the defining features of the franchise. Yeah, the director Darren Bowsman kind of talked about how he intentionally did, kind of switched away from the violence and gore of the previous Saw films because he wanted to have more conviction in the violence that they did choose to use, but. Ultimately, that just feels like an excuse for why he didn't include any better torture scenes in this film. Because, I mean, if you're going to make a... I mean, that is what the Saw franchise is. It is torture porn. And if if you're not going to do it right, you have to do something else better. And this film kind of just opted to just do a toned-down version of it instead of switching to a new source of horror. Or, like... Because, I mean... it. It just kind of tries to be a toned down version of torture porn. Yeah. And I think I was okay with like the cutaways, right? Or the, um, you know, like we'll see it, but we'll see it in fragments, which I think the director is alluding to. But he still could have done all of that and had the kills be interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that it's not just the cinematography and the directing that's a, that might be a problem. It's, it's actually the like what was being co- communicated that was just bland. It was bland. It was bland. And that is because the mystery itself that is presented in okay. this film is incredibly c- bland as well. I mean, some of those clues that the, that the puppet leaves this time around are just so incre- incredibly on the nose and obvious that like... I do not understand how an entire force of police officers oh. do not immediately get it within reading the clues. Yeah, so uh, the person sitting next to me who went with me, um, when he's like, I know where this is. This is the courthouse. She turned to me and she was like, is it because she he read it on the sign? Could that have been the clue? <laughs> right? Like, And there was, you know, like, it, you're absolutely correct. Like, none of that required police work that should have been profound. But also, 
it wasn't just like the clues that the killer was leaving within the film itself. I turned to this person 10 minutes into the film and I said, by the way, just to let you know, it's going to be the newcomer. The family isn't real. Um, and, and then I didn't say it cause I was trying to be quiet, but like I knew it was because of the dad, right? Because I knew that, that the story they kept flashing back to about yeah. the, you know, like none of that was a surprise or twist more than eight minutes, 10 minutes into the film. Right. Because anytime you're introduced to a character and you don't see a family in a horror film, you should be suspect. Mm-hmm. Any time that they flash back to a scene that many times, you should assume that there's going to be a tie into it. Yep. Um, and any time, just in general, that you introduce a character who's new to the world, you have to assume that they are going to either, again, if it's a very traditional um, narrative, they're going to either die, they're going to become a weird hero because the main character is going to die, and then they become the new hero, or they're mm-hmm. the villain. Right, those are your only options in a really traditional narrative. Which and so, this film is. Which this film is. And so my one of my biggest problems was I can't figure out I don't even know like the words I want. Like why? I think why. I can't figure out why. Why was this so exciting to the people that made this film? Because Chris Rock went to them and said, I want to do a new Saw film. Um, I have an idea and here it is. And I understand why Minghella joined because he got a kind of kick-ass um, villain speech there at the end, and also and he's not far enough yeah. in his career for it to. He you can't know. really say no. Yes, and he did. And you're right. That fi- the final scene, at least, is the mo- is the closest the film gets yes. to anything of worth because it at least gives Minghella the opportunity to give an incredible villain monologue. Yes. It has a cool set piece that references back to the puppetry that we've yes. been establishing throughout the film. Yes. It includes uh, nods to the police violence tor- specifically targeted at black people in America yes. and the preconceptions that you that are in police officers' mind when they see a black person with a gun. All of these things yep. are incredibly interesting, yep. and it has a decision that Chris Rock is forced to make, yes. and he makes a yes. decision, but it's yes. still wrong, and he still yes. do- what did not think through the full consequences of it. That final scene is a good saw scene, yes. it's a good film scene, and it's good commentary. And I want to come back to that, right? Because I want to tell you where I wanted it to go that it didn't. But I just want to mm-hmm. say, like, okay, so I know why Minghella did it. I know why Jackson did it because I'm pretty sure that Samuel L. Jackson's stance is if you're willing to pay me obscene amounts of money, I don't care. Um, I'm just not quite, <laughs> and I understand that money really, yeah. the answer is money. Yeah. But I just, there was nothing about this film that was inspiring, right? There was nothing about this film that wanted, that took me to the places that this film could have taken, except for, as you said, the potential within those final like five to 10 minutes. But in order for it to have gone there, Chris Rock's character needed to have said, you know what, you're right, I'm joining you, we're going to tag team and take out the system. That's the only way that it would have been really interesting, right? Exactly. And then you would have gotten, you would have, the spiral thing would have made sense. You know, if, I feel like this, what, the whole movie that we saw, if they had just condensed the movie that we saw into a first act, and this was the first act of a whole, of a real oh, horror that movie. That would have been so cool. It would have been really excellent because then you get to go on and we get to see if their spiral plan of introducing systematic uh, um, forced yes. reforms into the police system, if it actually worked. And the scary thing might have been that it did actually work. Yeah. Uh, and that would have been like, okay, guys, let's... Uh, if this is if this is actually able to work, yeah. that's a pretty scary thing that that says about the current hellscape yes. that we live in. However, it doesn't do that. Do you know why else that would have been so brilliant? Like this is the film that I, I wish you had made for me, uh, Anthony. Because if that had been just the first act, it would have also allowed us to play with genre. Because it would have been the first act would have been horror and crime procedure. The second mm-hmm. act could have been horror and buddy film. <laughs> and then the third act could have been, you know, who knows what else. But, like, there would have been so much room to go places unexpectedly. And like you said, I think it would have created this really horrific sensation of, well, if the system is broken and this is working, or or if the system is broken and not even this can fix it, either mm-hmm. way, I'm down for that horror film. Yeah, because the source of horror in this film is ultimately just kind of muddied because... I mean, I I guess the film is advocating for 
police performs kind kind of but that guy is all, he's also presented as this as clearly the villain yes. in both the eye in the eyes of the central character that we the audience are following yes. through so through that viewpoint protagonist so how is the audience supposed to view this it kind of seems like not well we're not supposed to right. think this character is right which undermines everything we've seen yes. in the film Yes. So even that final scene itself is frustrating because of the viewpoint protagonist that the film forced us to view the experience of the film through. Yeah. And so, again, we go back to, it was fine. What? Yeah. But, you know, I mean, fine, we are reaching a point, I would argue we've reached it already, that fine, fine isn't good enough anymore. Um, yeah. Which isn't going to matter, apparently, to them, because you said that there's already been a commitment for a tenth film. Oh yeah, they in, before this movie even came out back in April 2021, uh, they confirmed that Saw 10 was in development with Twisted Pictures. So, I it clearly seems like despite the fact that this film had a lower than expected box office opening and it wasn't all that well received, that they're just gonna keep plowing ahead and they're gonna milk this cash cow for as long as they're able to. So you can join us uh, when we talk about Saw 27, Saw 54, <laughs> however long they keep making them until we die or the franchise ends, whichever one exactly. comes first. Uh, so go ahead and let us know what you thought of Spiral down below. I mean, uh, not a lot of people have seen the film based on the the box office returns but some of you might have if you've seen it let us know what you thought if you liked it if you didn't like it if you haven't seen us let us know why you didn't see it yet uh all yeah, those and spoilers, reasons are acceptable right? <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh but yeah let us know in the comments down below or in our social medias <laughs> yeah please feel free to follow us on social media again our information is below we are actually active on social media or activish um and we <laughs> are always willing and excited for suggestions or recommendations because just like you we uh live breathe and consume horror yeah so thank you so much for joining us for this eerie extra and have a spooktacular day <laughs>